to How To, a quality digest series for quality control and quality assurance specialists who need quick instruction on how to get, well, something done. The episode is sponsored by Mitatoyo. And in this episode, Craig Howell of CPM Labs is going to show us how to use low force digital micrometers and calipers. Great. The first one I'm going to show you is provided by Mitatoyo. It's a low force, low force OD micrometer. And you'll notice it resolves out to 50 millionths of an inch. Now, it has this low force feature out here in the tail stock. And that is adjusted with the screwdriver. You'll adjust it to different, different forces. And what it does, it, it, it's a spring-loaded spindle. So that's how that works. Let's get on the gauge stand where I can show you a little better. And uh, while you're doing it, what's, what's the purpose of these low force? Instruments. For measuring some, some harder plastic, some rubber parts, things that would deform very easily with using just a normal handheld instrument. Some, everyone has a different feel, where this will give us very similar readings between people. Between operators, okay. Right. Okay. Whoops. So again, here is where the actual, the actual screwdriver, they go to change the force on this. This goes from a half a Newton up to 2.5 Newton, which is different, different levels of force it takes to activate it. So the first thing we would do, we clean it off as always. I zero them out, and you have to zero this out in the direction you're going, especially in these low force. I'm set to a very low force right now. It will all come into play. So we're gonna clean that off. I'm going to go ahead and check my zero and reset it. Now, what's that H that you the showed? The H there? means you're there. You go, you, you go to the contacts and you, you go to the H, and that means you're there. You, you've reached the, uh, you've the reached force. It's force. Oh, yes. Okay. And check it again. See, I turn it. That's it is it is zeroed out. To release that, you just push the hold button. Now you're live. Now this has the fast acting spindle, where you just turn it a little bit and it flies. They actually have done time studies on how much, how much time it saves people when they're measuring different diameters to have this okay. fast force. So yeah, it has- kind of a standard micrometer, you sit there and spin it forever if you're yes. too far out. Yeah, yeah. Each, each rotation is usually 25,000. So yeah. They have a ratio, and this, this is a very high ratio, so yeah. or low ratio, so it really moves. So let's show how it would be used, for instance. I'm gonna measure these little, little ferrules on a, on a wire crimp type of thing. And we'll just go till, till I get the H means I'm, I'm at the right place. Now, of course, you have to orient it correct. You don't want to be cockeyed, especially at this low force. And I'll go right till I get the H. And th this measures 0.32425. Okay. Now, you mentioned orientation. Does orientation of the, uh, of the micrometer itself micrometer. matter? Yes. Okay. That, that is because even the components within it when you're at these low forces are gonna start showing up. And you're all about eliminating error or eliminating questions, uncertainty. Right, being consistent. Right. So there, 25760. Now different people have different fields. If you tried this with a different micrometer, your touch might be different than mine. I bet you can probably get pretty close to what I got. I have an idea here. Let's set this at origin there. Okay. We'll, we'll set that as a zero just to compare readings. How do we do together? How do you do? Okay, now I'm not gonna look at, the, I'm not gonna look well, at the- Well, it's gonna be zeroed. Okay. But you, we're gonna wanna go down till it just touches. Okay. I've gotta get this zeroed out first. What is it? Okay, it's, it's me because I have to be oriented correct. Okay, I'm repeating within one ten thousandth of an inch, which is pretty good. Why don't you give it a try? I'm, I'm putting it till the black is, is just all the way in. Okay, so I'm gonna give it a try, a complete novice. So I'm going to go ahead and very careful as you approach zero. Okay, almost let go now. There, okay. keep going till you see the letter H. Keep twisting okay, keep till you twisting. see the letter H. Keep twisting, go ahead, you got ways to go. Keep going. You're going to go past zero to the letter H. Keep going. Okay. So you measured one tenth difference than I did. Okay. Which, among among accuracy, one tenth difference is probably the the accuracy of the actual gauge. Okay. So some of the other features that this micrometer has, it has an SPC output, so you can 
you can hit a foot switch if you, if you get that option and input the data right into your spreadsheet. It has the quick acting spindle, the low force, which is, is the whole key to this micrometer, which is adjustable through here. You have different hold features if you need to hold during the process, it will do that. And you have your, your data, which you can signal the data output to go. Huh? So that's okay. the micrometer. Okay, and that's an adjustable force. That is adjustable force. This is a similar, this is a, let's get this down here. This is a caliper, and you'll notice right here has the uh, a little needle section. I'm going to try to do this. I'm upside down and backwards, so bear with me. But as you close this, there we go. As I close this, you're going to see a little needle come into play. And right when you get that needle zero, that's where you would zero. I'm actually going to go over to the gauge cam. I can't work upside down like that. So right there, I've got the needle to where it's zeroed. You would zero it if it wasn't. The accuracy of the instrument is 2,000 overall, but within that little range between the two, it's one division. It's five ten thousandths of an inch. Let's try measuring something with it. We'll try measuring a piece of piece of, of rather hard rubber, but it's rubber. If you were to try it, you'd get a different different measurement if you try it with a conventional tool. With this one, we'll go down just until the needle's right in the middle. Make sure we're oriented correctly. And again, this is this reduces. Uh, repeatability errors between, between operators, operators or even your, yourself. You're, you're going to get closer to the same reading every time. Right. And I'm yeah. getting 2.5560 on this piece. Let's try it back on our, back on these. Okay. Just, just as a for instance, we can do that comparison again where... I'll go ahead and, zero and get it right up to that needles in the middle. I'm getting about 3250. Okay. Let's try it twice just to make sure I might have been cockeyed a little bit, maybe not. 3250. Okay. Now you give it a try. All right. So now the, uh, the complete idiot here will give it a shot. So I'm going to, you had it about close to the top, yeah. right? Yeah. Come into the camera a little more. Uh, oh, there we go. There right. you go. So, okay. So, I, oh. Oop. Yes. We know who does this for a living and who doesn't. There you go. That's a good area. Just go to that needle comes right up. Okay, so I'm just going to, till the needle comes right in the middle. Hmm. We got within about a thousandth of each other. Well, okay. Is that good? Yeah, that, that's very good because <laughs> okay. you're a little past that. On I the am needle. a little past. So, okay, yeah. yep, yep. If you were correct, it'd probably be within a half thousand, which is one division. Okay. You can't do much better than that. Let's try the same thing using a conventional caliper. We know, what, what was that, 3250? Uh, 3245? Three, 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 yeah. yeah. Right no, I'm, not, I'm not going to look at the reading. I'm just going to... I'll try giving this a try. Try not to look at the display. Okay. I'm just going by rotation, and it is holding the part, so I'm not okay. just going for a number. I'm getting a, a little okay. different than what we got with okay. the other tool. Okay. You give it a try, Dirk. Okay, so I don't this know. This is the area you're going to want to work. Okay, so I didn't see what you did there, so let me... Uh, right in there. All right, so let's come back to here. Yep. So right about, right yeah. about in here, is you that where you Just kind of twist the part a little bit will get you an idea of when you're touching it. That's kind of what I do. Okay, I feel oh, like right. I'm just... Just touching it. Yeah. Just touching it. I had 325, you had 324. We're within okay, a thousandth okay. of right. each other. But you can see you could get different readings. It would be right. very if I, if easy. If I had pushed a little bit harder, I would have deformed it, gotten a, 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 different, a different reading. Okay. Right. So this is the constant force, low, low force caliper from Mitutoyo. Again, with a SPC output. Has a number of different features. It has the absolute technology where you can zero it anywhere along the line, and it still will come back to zero when you go back to absolute. Great tool, very versatile. Okay. Well, once again, uh, Craig, thanks a lot. Uh, that was the uh, the low force uh, low force micrometer micrometer uh, adjustable uh, yep. force micrometer and the fixed low force caliper from Mitutoyo. Thanks uh, to Mitutoyo for supplying those to us. Mitutoyo is our sponsor today. So once again, thanks to them. Thanks to all of you for joining us, and we will see you at the next how to.
As the world's largest provider of measurement and inspection solutions, Mitutoyo America Corporation offers a complete selection of machines, sensors, systems, and services with a line encompassing CMMs, vision, form, precision tools and instruments, and metrology data management software. Mitutoyo's nationwide network of metrology centers provides application, calibration, service, repair, and educational programs.